All right, we're going to talk about phase changes, uh, going from different forms of uh, matter, the solid, liquid, gases, and how they interact with each other and how they change from one phase to another. Uh, so let's use this uh, as an example, as a good diagram to show us how these things interact with each other. All right, so if we're going to go from solid to a liquid, um, we're actually going to call that melting, which I know we've heard that word many times before. Um, and that actually requires energy. We need heat to melt something. Um, so we're going to call that an endothermic process, meaning that it requires energy or requires heat for that reaction or that, that uh, phase that, um, to occur. So if we're going to, from liquid, the opposite, from liquid to solid, we're going to call that freezing, which I know we've heard many times before too. Um, that actually releases some sort of energy. It's going to be um, an exothermic process, meaning it releases energy. Those guys are opposite of each other, uh, melting and freezing of the same thing. So let's go over to liquids and gases. Um, if we're going from liquid to gas, we're going to call that vaporization. We're going to vaporize that particular liquid. Um, that actually uh, requires energy as well. We need heat or some sort of uh, energy to make that happen. So we're going to call that an endothermic process. The opposite would be con condensation when we're condensing something from a gas down to a liquid. Um, that's an exothermic process, meaning that's going to also release some sort of energy. There are rare instances where substances will go straight from the gas phase to the solid phase. Um, this doesn't happen as often as you probably know, um, but they do happen and this does occur with different substances. So if we're going from the gas phase down to the solid phase, we're actually going to release that sort of energy because we know gas is in a high, has higher energy than solid phase, so we're going to release that energy and we're going to call that process deposition. Um, the opposite would be sublimation, going from solid to a gas. Um, we've seen this probably before when you've ever played with dry ice or solid CO2, maybe iodine crystals. They go from the solid phase straight to the gas phase, skipping over the liquid phase. Uh, that actually it releases, source, releases some sort of energy, and um, that we call the endothermic process. All right, so let's actually look at this in a different way. Uh, this you might, you might see more often in class. This is actually a different a graph describing all those things that we just talked about. Um, all right, so on the x or sorry, on the y axis we have temperature. On the x axis, we're, x axis we're going to have energy. Um, okay, so we know in this case we're going to talk about water, the phase change of water, and we know that below zero degrees Celsius that is in a solid phase. Okay, so as we increase energy, uh, the temperature of that solid is going to increase until we hit zero degrees Celsius, which we know is its melting and freezing point. Um, so if we increase if we uh, increase the energy, it's going to melt. If we're going from liquid to solid, it's going to start freezing. But notice the temperature, it's not changing even though we're increasing temperature. Why is that? Well, that energy that we're pumping into this, into this uh, molecule or this substance is actually being used to break up those intermolecular forces that are holding it together in a solid. So here's a picture of water and those blue dots are the hydrogen bonds that are holding it together in a solid. So. Um, because solids have more hydrogen bonds than liquids, that, pro that energy is going to be used to break up some of those bonding or some of those forces that are holding it together. Then as we go from 0 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius, we're going to be in the liquid phase. All, that ener all of the energy is going to be um, used to increase the temperature of that particular liquid, in this case, water. Um, and here we have the same thing. We have this plateau. At 100 degrees Celsius, we know that it's, it's a vaporization point or it's con condensation point. Um, Again, it's flat, and again, that energy is being used to break apart more of these hydrogen bonds. Once at, at 100 degrees Celsius, these bonds are going to be pretty rare because the energy is being used to break them apart and have them flow around all over the place. And then up at higher temperatures above, it's always going to be um, in a gaseous phase. If we go straight from solid to a gas, which water doesn't do, if it were to, we would call that sublimation, going skipping this liquid phase completely. If we're going from gas to a solid, we're going to call it deposition. We're going to complete, again, uh, skipping that liquid phase. So this, actually, this diagram talks about the different phase changes that um, substances tend to undergo.